Bonjour, monsieur. Hola. Homo estas. Homo estas? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. In, in that context, that would mean, hello, you're a homo. Accurate. <laughs> Love you. Love you too. Love you more. I love you more. I love you most. More most -rest. I love you most ever. I love you more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not going in the video. Hey guys, it's Sunday. Yeah? It is Sunday. It is Sunday. And welcome back to the den. So, I uh, just wanted to start by saying sorry for last week. Um, He's real sorry about it. Really about sorry. It. About it. I've uh, been working a lot of hours and... Uh, yeah. It's just been absolutely nuts at work. And there was a, like a big incident that happened that I don't think we're allowed to talk about. So Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I was just not saying so, anything because I didn't think you were allowed to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so um, got kind of caught up with that. and So it was a little bit busy, but uh, we decided that for this week's video, we were going to continue the miseducation of Miss Phyllis Dr. Pappen. A.K.A. making him watch a bunch of gay shit that he's never seen before. Yeah, pretty much. So... This week, it was. Ken's choice. You suggested it. Yeah, um, but you you keep mentioning it, and every time. Yeah, it was one of those where you really need to see it because I reference it periodically. But it's the um, Meryl Streep classic uh, from 1989, She Devil. Almost didn't want to watch it because you know I'm so mad at Roseanne, but. It's a good movie. So, well, it's, yeah. a, it's a terrible movie, but it's a camp classic movie. It was good. <laughs> I enjoyed it. So, what did you think of the movie? Like, obviously you said it's good, but... Um, it was a little dry in parts. Like, roughly halfway through, it just felt really dry and, like, almost like a chore to watch. But that was common with a lot of like late 80s early 90s movies in that genre yeah where it just they kind of dragged it on a little bit it, it could have been a shorter movie but yeah so like right around the time where she started working at the nursing home was... yeah okay yeah I like can see I, that. I get that there were plot reasons why like she yeah. had to establish certain things and set certain things up out. To... Kind of um, like First Wives Club, which you've also never seen. I know. Or A League of Their Own. Gay card? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I love this movie, if nothing else, for the one green screen moment where she's walking away from the house as it explodes, and it's so incredible incredibly fake looking that you just can't look away. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah, it was really funny. I knew that it was coming and I still laughed my ass Yeah, out. Yeah, you're never really prepared for just how bad it is. I mean, I like I like the movie. You know, any, any Revenge of the X type thing, I'm totally down for, especially when the dude's a douchebag and the dude was a douchebag. Mm. And it's very 80s, like there are certain plot lines that you can never get away with now, like it, when she works, goes to work for the um, the retirement home, and yeah. she uses an alias, makes and... up an alias. You can never get away with that now, mm -hmm. because of all the background checks and like everything's computerized. But it's entertaining nonetheless. Yeah, my favorite part of the movie was just seeing all the people that were in it that I didn't realize were in it. Um, yeah, Linda Hunt. I know she was probably in her forties there, but like. She's young compared to, like, obviously now when you see her on TV and... Right. Was it CSI, Law & or something like that? And she played the voice of management in Carnival, The Incredibles. She's talking like, about the one that played Mrs. Hooper, right? Yeah, she's such a fantastic actress. And I don't remember her actual name, but the actress who played uh, Mei Chang 
you know, just a new guy. Oh, yeah. 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 She was in that. She, I, I don't think they gave her a name in the movie. She was just Asian lady or something like that in the credits. Oh, Rose Temp Agency Woman. Oh, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Kind of funny because I saw her and I was thinking... She looks familiar. That she looks familiar... Is that maybe the old Asian lady from Orange is the New Black? And I thought, and totally is was. that completely it, racist to no. go, hey, they look similar. They could <laughs> Well, as soon as you said that, I, it clicked in my head because I never clocked that before. It was never like, oh, I remember seeing her. Yeah. Yeah, so that was really cool. Um, the people that were in it. Ed Begley Jr. Mm. Douchebag. <laughs> well, and he plays a douchebag so convincingly. I, I've heard he's a really nice guy, genuine down to earth. Probably and, is. But, like, yeah, he plays a dink so well. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if you all are familiar with the plot of She-Devil, um, but basically Roseanne Barr is a, uh, a housewife. She's going on about how she's not the ideal housewife, and she's heavy and she's not exactly the most attractive and blah blah blah. Yeah, she's got a great big mole. And they go to this party where she inadvertently spills her wine on this woman who's an author. Um, and she's she's at the party with her husband. And the the author that she live is a woman, um, meets the husband and they immediately have this attraction and they click and he ends up having an affair with her. And Roseanne character goes understandably crazy about it because her husband's being unfaithful and makes this list based on their last argument right before he left of all the things that she wanted to destroy in his life yeah um, his top four things that were most important to him yeah like career family uh, fam freedom and there was one other yeah I can't remember what the last but one is but regardless um, so she basically does all this stuff to set him up to fail um, all the way down the line, like, she blows up the house so that she has to take the kids to live with him in this author's mansion, and then she sabotages several things. I don't want to give away the whole thing if you haven't seen it or not. But she goes down the list, basically, and just sets him up to fail at every turn, while at the same time she sets up this business that empowers women and helps them to find employment. It was really good. It was a bit cheesy, but oh, I, I did enjoy it quite a bit. Late 80s movie. Her character was similar to Madeline Ashton. From Death Becomes Her? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was that very ritzy, snooty, bitchy woman. Yeah. Well, I mean, Meryl Streep definitely has a type that she can she, play she, well. She, she played a, a, <laughs> yeah, a snooty, rich diva, basically. Well, yeah, I mean, and just look was, at Devil Wears Prada. Yeah, yeah, she does a, she everything she's in she does yeah. well, but just it reminded me of that character, and it was probably because that would be within what yeah. Death Becomes Her was what ninety two, ninety four. It was early nineties. Yeah, so probably within a couple of years. Yeah, which I'm glad you've seen that one because oh my god, I referenced that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I love that movie. Now a warning. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's definitely one that I would recommend, and now that you've seen it... I'd recommend, recommend it, yeah. If you're looking for a good, campy, fun 80s Surprisingly movie. hard to find online, though. Yeah, yeah. Not available from, from YouTube. YouTube or the Play Store or iTunes. Yep. And we even have a place right around the corner from here that still rents movies. Um, and unfortunately, they were closed by the time we were, we were going to go to look, but I would be surprised if they had it, given that it's that hard, that difficult to find. I think they'd have it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a good one for an idle Sunday afternoon, or if you're doing like a camp movie night, or you just want to if turn you're off do your a brain Meryl for Street a while. Night, that one followed by Death Becomes Her would be fantastic. Yeah. I'm sure there's a few more in there that I haven't seen that are also as good, but... Yeah, now I want to watch Death Becomes Her again. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we'll watch that one for fun, but then we'll do another one in the Miss Education and Miss Phyllis Dr. Pappin. Yeah, you got lots of catching up to do, lady. Yeah. So, what do you think? Next week, 
a league of their own, first wives club. How about both? Review them both. Well, we were talking about Death Becomes Her, and it's got Goldie Hawn in it, and First Wives Club has Goldie Hawn in it. And Bette Midler. Yeah. Love Bette Midler. There's a Bette Midler movie that I love that you haven't seen. Isn't she great? And I have not she seen She plays her. Jackie Collins. Okay. The the one who wrote Valley of the Dolls. Yeah. Yeah, so good. David Head Pierce is in it, too. Hmm. And Nathan Lane. That's pretty gay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a fantastic movie, <laughs> so we'll have to watch it. But I think we're gonna cut this one short and sweet since we've been kind of droning on and on in our past couple of films. So, so yeah, um, she devil recommended. Still don't like Roseanne Barr, um, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> like a movie without liking the actress, right? Yeah. Well. I think that's going to do it for us this week, guys. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified as soon as we post a new video. Uh, and don't forget to check us out on Facebook. Bye!